This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. I felt like I had some bars in me coming. No, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I, didn't have it. I almost had it. I almost caught a flow. It was decent. Almost uh, caught it. Real excited about our guest today that's coming by Heather B. Lupita. You like you like Lupita? Yeah, I think she's very talented. Uh, she was at the um the over the weekend at, at the Smithsonian, the big the, the big talk of the town was everybody was going to the Smithsonian, right? And we we got a special guest with us today who uh who is uh an outstanding correspondent. Mm -hmm. um, she goes by the name of Simone Boyce. She's with us right now. We Hello. actually did a sit-down interview, and she brought out the best of me, Heather B. That was nice. Yes. I, yes. She brought out the best of me. Yeah. Thank She's, you, Sway. That's such a huge compliment. Oh, thank you, Simone. For, <laughs> you know, that's such a hard task. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for having me. Fox hey, 5 cultural co correspondent, and you're also an Emmy-nominated TV reporter and producer. <laughs> Right? Yes. What does that mean to be Emmy nominated? Like you could go to the family functions now and you got this prestige attached to your name. I mean, it's better to win. I'm, okay. I'm, still, okay. I'm okay. still waiting for the win, but right now I'll take the nomination. Okay, you'll take the nomination? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. What's some of the work that they pointed out that, that got you, that earned you that nomination? Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember. What was I? I, mean, I think it was a Broadway special. I uh -huh. love covering the arts. Um, I moved to New York City about two and a half years ago for this position, and my favorite part about working in New York City is covering the rich arts and culture scene. So it was. I think it was the nomination for, was for Broadway. Well, congratulations, man. Well, you thank know. you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ain't got no nomination. Yet. No. <laughs> you start a Broadway sway, you sleep a lot in, at the place. He does. So he sleeps a lot. Get your best sleep Damn. on Broadway. I got some of my best power naps watching Broadway. On Broadway? Yes, yes. Simone, yes. You know, sometimes that happens. It's okay. It's okay, it, right? It does, it does happen, yeah. You fell asleep in a few? Of no, them? no, I can't, I can't fall asleep. Okay. I don't I don't fall asleep, but it, it does happen. I've seen it happen. Okay, so, okay, see, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> um, so you were watching TV this weekend? Yes. So what did you watch? Let's see. Um, well, I, I'm so excited that we have this museum. Okay. This um, National um, Museum of African American History and yep. Culture. It's It's been such a long time coming. Yeah. And when you think that we're in 2016 and we didn't have this museum already, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy yeah. to think of all the achievements that went unnoticed in that way, but are now being being noticed and celebrated. It's it's huge it's so powerful i can't wait to go see it i just yeah. want to go to dc right now and go see it hell yeah man we should go hand in hand because they've been Please. pushing for it since 1915 yeah, yeah. and a lot wow. of people don't realize um that the person who authorized this former president george w bush yeah that's great man mm -hmm. that is amazing i, didn't, I, I, I guess he, he does like <laughs> black people a little right, bit right, right. like something that's about them that's, that's, a, that's exactly. not the same thing that's not the same thing no, no. liking black people and, and, and being guilted and two, <laughs> yes, two we don't things. know but here are the, some of the good things there's okay so for the opening day there were 3,000 artifacts that are available but there's going to be 37,000 objects in total um, some of the highlights that are really interesting to me the dress that Rosa Parks um, was sewing before she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat mm. on that segregated bus that's over there for viewing um, Harriet Tubman's hymn book a $600 bill of sale for a teenage girl named Polly mm. the coffin of Emmett Till there's a lot that's a lot you know I would yeah. buy uh, Harriet, Tub Harriet Tubman's hymn book though I don't think it's up for sale it, oh, it wasn't up. Oh, okay, okay. It's a museum. Oh, 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 you know, okay, it's like okay. it's like it, it stays there. They arrest, they arrest you. Side. You'll go to jail. You can't Stop. touch it. Swear you can't sing from it. Shit. Hey, how much is this, homie? <laughs> hey, homie. <laughs> Tapping on the glass. <laughs> I, want I want this. I want that one. I want, I want this right that. here. Yeah. I'll take two of those. Hey, you get practice. <laughs> Mike Will made it. Put a beat underneath the kid. Right. We got platinum. Bar son. Great. It's President Bush actually speaking on the museum. Um. He was there along with others who had some powerful things to say. As some of you may know, I'm a fledgling painter, a struggling artist. I have a new appreciation for the artists whose brilliant works are displayed here. People like Robert Duncanson, Henry Oswald Tanner, Charles Henry Alston. Our country is better and more vibrant because of their contributions and the contributions of millions of African Americans. No telling of American history is neither complete nor accurate. 
without acknowledging them. The lesson of this museum is all, that all Americans share a past and a future by staying true to our principles, righting injustice, and encouraging the empowerment of all. We will be an even greater nation for generations to come. Yeah, that's President Bush. He wanted attendees at the first National African American History Museum. Uh, we're going to take your calls. We got more celebrity wire. Simone Boyce has joined us. You can reach her directly where? At Simone Boyce on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that, Snapchat, everything. Everything. Okay, so hit her up. She's going to participate up next on Celebrity Wire. We have Brad Pitt. Allegedly, he is sharing his side of the story and what he is pissed off about Angelina. Shade for five. All right. Also, we have with us Simone Boyce. She's a Fox 5 New York cultural co- correspondent, um, producer. Um, author Emmy nominated Emmy nominated Ow. Y'all are um, blowing me up way too much I can't I can't I can't live up to this Ballroom dancer <laughs> um, Broadway enthusiast Simone Boyce is here Thank you <laughs> Thank you Absolutely Absolutely Thank you Sway Simone You mentioned the, the museum Yes um, It's in Washington D.C. But anyone can just go now So it's open to the public uh, my aunt, so my family lives in D.C. She tried to get us tickets, but there's some sort of like line that you have to get in. It's staggered. You can only get it in a, in a certain window. So I think the first availability that they had was like November, December for us to get tickets. So Oh, really? I, I think it's going to be tough to get tickets because the demand is just through the roof. Just the first National African American um, History Museum. Everyone was there um, in attendance. Will Smith, Dave Chappelle, Colin Powell. He's been hot lately. Uh, Debbie Allen, uh, Felicia Rashad, former President Bill Clinton, uh, Vice President Joe Biden, Congressman John Lewis, Angela Bassett, um, our guest today, Lupita and, and Youngo. Youngo. Yes. Uh, she was there as well. Oprah, Gail King. Yo, so we weren't there, but uh, it, was, it looks <laughs> exciting. It's okay. We will get there. We'll get there, right? All right, Simone, you going to join us for some Celebrity Wire? Yeah, All let's right, do this. Tracy, what you got? Okay, believe it or not, I still got updates on Meek Mill and the game, yo. Wow. Getting oh, so gosh. ridiculous. I thought it was over. Russell Simmons, you know, he had came out, said that he spoke to the both of them and that the beef was squashed. But then um, someone in Meek Mill's camp was like, I don't know, or Games, Games camp, camp was saying, I don't know, maybe he was doing yoga with Meek Mill because we don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and here's the latest. So, the game apparently believes that Beanie Siegel was jumped over the weekend. Why would Beanie Siegel be jumped when he just went on wax with Meek Mill to diss the game on that ooh remix? Well, here are some suggestions. Allegedly, Beanie, he was doing a performance in Philly. He called himself the king of Philly. So, allegedly, Meek Mill got upset about that. Or it could possibly be that Beanie was doing an interview recently and said that he helped Meek Mill write his rhymes. Listen to this. So, no, he didn't say nothing to get me on the track. I just happened to come in the studio. So, you know, I just was helping him out with some lyrics. And the situation kind of played out like it did. But it's really no beef, especially between me and Gang. Me and Gang got a good relationship, you know, had one for years. So it's not me and Gang beef. That's a Gang and uh, Meek Mill beef. So... Yeah, so people are saying that part about helping the lyrics shouldn't have slipped from his mouth. Because we don't know what help me means. Okay, so anymore. Simone, that's why we have you here. Dissect this. Dissect this, Simone. Ooh. What is going on? That <laughs> was Benny tough. Siegel. <laughs> they got, you know, apparently game allegedly got jumped at a concert backstage, got knocked out or something like that. And they're saying it's because of this interview. Or yeah. He reveals that he helped out with lyrics. You know, that's a faux pas in the rap game. Mm-hmm. Simone Boyce, break it down. Break it down. I just think nowadays you got to be careful about everything you say. Because right. everything you say is going to get picked up. It's going to get circulated. So it sounds like you need to just be careful about what you're going to say. Because it could come back to, to bite you. Right. As we see now. Yeah. If mm. this is true, mm. what is being said about... You know, Benny Siegel being jumped backstage, knocked out even. I heard similar rumors. Yeah. I won't say where I heard them from. Okay. But just add them. We'll uh. see. I haven't had any words come from Benny Siegel's camp. And but... he's saying it's from Meek Mill's camp that this happened? Yeah. Oh, man. Let's go to Canada. Everybody's <laughs> happy. They're hugging <laughs> you. You know, it's nice out the there. The art of being kind. 
telling you. Huh. Well, well, two other people who aren't too kind to each other, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. We know their holy matrimony is over. According to Angela Jolie, Angelina Jolie, excuse me, her side, reportedly she put all her coins and bought herself a private investigator who did some work, found out allegedly that Brad Pitt was having an affair. Also, there were stories saying that Brad Pitt, while he was on a private jet, he was drinking, guzzling down some alcohol too much, got to the point where he was physically and verbally abusive to his kid. Now, of course, we've got another side. So we're going to flip the coin. And according to TMZ, uh-huh. Brad Pitt is saying, nah, it ain't because of me we get in this divorce. It's because of Angelina and her wild political ambitions. And he kept getting increasingly upset about it. And he wasn't happy about her traveling so much to these war-torn countries like Lebanon and Iraq and bringing the kids with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah, nice little Not vacation. Not a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> with helmets on and protective gear. Right, so you felt like she was putting everywhere. Yeah, the, the kids' livelihood at risk. Simone Boyce is here to break it down. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Just hand it over to me. Okay, so... One thing I don't like about the way that this has been covered is this this whole private eye angle and dragging in another actress. I'm not going to mention her name because I don't feel like it's right to mention her name when we don't know the truth. Mm. But it, this the dialogue, the narrative in situations like this, it always tends to focus on the other woman mm-hmm. instead of focusing on what is going wrong between these two people. Yeah. Um, so I, I really don't like that aspect of it. I mean, the other thing is if Brad Pitt and Angelina can't make it work... Yeah. There's no hope for the rest of us. <laughs> the two most beautiful people in the world, two of the most wealthy people in the world. I mean, if if they can't make it work, it's bad. Now, I'm gonna tell you where they went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> too many damn kids, man. That ain't theirs, man. <laughs> it's too many kids. It's too much. It's yeah. pulling in different directions. Three like adopted, three of their own. own. I think it went wrong with how it started. Oh, with um, um, him cheating on Jennifer Aniston yeah. for Angelina. And I think the start, I think it the was beginning. doomed from the start. But usually when you have a rocky start like that, it ends like within single digit years. They no. went on for a long time. 12 years. Well, they were together, together for, 12 for 12 years. They only got married like a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the whole marriage thing and the travel, once you say I do, Everything gets funny. And that's, you know what? That's all They I'm allegedly say. did it because of their kids, because their kids kept saying, Mommy, Daddy, how come you guys aren't married? And then what I just say? Why do you guys have different last names? Too many names? kids in your ear, and man. And it's a lot of kids. It's <laughs> Too a many lot. kids I think in your only ear. Only two of the children are actually biological children. Three. And then three. Because three, mm-hmm. they got twins. And then one of them dresses however they want. <laughs> the, the little, it's, it's a lot going on in that family, seriously. So mm. you got to be careful. A lot of extra stress. Careful. A lot do, of extra do, do, stress. Do kids ever uh, mess up the marriage? Sure mm. they do. You are trying to get snuggly at night and the kids are climbing in the bed and yep. doing all kind of stuff. Nobody and you have to choose between to being that. a mother and a wife. It's true. I, I almost think ruined my parents' marriage. I walked in on them when I was like six years old. My mama was handcuffed to the bed. Damn. Oh, that's why I chased them. That was traumatizing up. to me and to them. If the parents don't have a strong foundation for the marriage, then yes, I think that the kids can take away from that and and uh um the you know you just need to have a really strong base if you're mm-hmm. going to keep a family like that together yeah. simone boyce right there so tracy almost ruined a marriage because she found her mom handcuffed to a bed what yes. was your father yes. doing yo <laughs> i don't want to go it's too deep man the wound is still kind of fresh we'll talk about it up next really? um, when kids have come in the way of your marriage <laughs> you 888-742-3345 call us citizens call us all right, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, stay, they're staying in the news right yeah, now. Yeah, yo, they're right in the center of it all. And according to TMZ, Brad Pitt, he was like, nah, you know what? We're going to have this divorce, not because you caught my ass cheating, but because I'm catching you taking the kids over to Lebanon, you taking them to Iraq, and he doesn't understand why that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, the kids, man. They were happy till they had the kids. Six kids? Yeah, Simone, Simone Boyce has joined us, too. Uh, hello, hello. With Fox 5 New York, and you say if the relationship is sturdy if you have a strong foundation kids shouldn't interfere no they shouldn't okay great um i got one so i can imagine having six (laughs) in my ear at all 
times crazy. of the day. I, yeah, yeah. But sway, you, yeah, yeah. you, okay. So you just, <laughs> you didn't get married. But I'm saying, having right. one, you're, you're present in your daughter's life. You're there. It's different than being in a house with kids and they want to climb in the bed and then it's just like all of this crap. Yeah. You, 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 I don't understand how well, people make it with all of these kids. Well, Melinda is on the line from Kentucky. What up, Melinda? Tell us, Melinda. Melinda. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's well. Up? Um, I, I, my husband and I, we have three kids. Um, our oldest is 21 and then we took a break for a few years and then I have a stepdaughter who's 16, but that's my baby the same way that the other ones are. And then I have a 12 year old. Well, um, you know, we, we have a strong relationship, but to be honest with you, my husband puts our kids first uh, and it pisses me the fuck off. To tell the like, truth. To the point to where. I sometimes don't even like the kids because, like, for example. Tell the truth. My kids, all three of them, have broke their cell phones. And my husband's like, well, I got to go get them a cell phone. Well, I accidentally dropped mine. And he gave me grief. And I was like, oh, hell no. Yep. They break their cell phone, and the Trump Hiltons get a brand new phone, and it ain't nothing. And I said, and I work my ass off, and you giving me grief about getting another cell phone. Or the 12-year-old, bless her heart. I love her, but I don't like her. <laughs> See, I... I nursed her, <laughs> and okay. she still thinks she's supposed to sleep in the bed with me. And I'm like, I ain't got nothing for you. Get your ass and go in your room. That's what Heather oh, said. Man. I'm telling you, it's the 12 bed. years old. She because she's been she's on her 12. titty for so long. Okay. She was on. And the I'm board. like, she nursed Get her. the hell away from me. You you a woman now. <laughs> Leave me alone. And I mean, like, I have days to where I'm like, I don't even want to come to this madhouse. Yeah, I yeah. hope your kids ain't listening, man. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, now, they better not be listening. They better have their ass at school doing their work. Oh, my see, gosh. And, that, and see, Melinda, and my maybe kids. maybe that's what Brad and Angelina yes. are, are going Brad, through. Brad, not Angelina, Brad, just Brad. Brad. might be going through the same thing. Melinda. Damn kids somewhere. <laughs> but Melinda, what about a family therapist? You ever reached out to one? Um, babe, um, I'm I'm actually a trained educator. Um, I've done the whole thing. I mean, I know the science behind it or whatever, but my husband grew up and had, like, a traumatic situation. He lost his mother when he was three years old. I mean, like, it was a, a accident. His Well, it was a bad situation. His dad shot his mother. Oh. And so when it comes to, like, certain familial bonds or whatever, he just, like, is so attached to the kids. And, I mean, he loves them to death, which they really don't like him. They, We oh. all kind of, we get along like cats and dogs in our house. But we love each other, but we keep it 100. Like, we really need to have a show called Keeping Up with the Joneses. Cause it real. Yeah, I like can sound like it. live you, in our house. You just gave me a whole season of episodes right there in yeah. four minutes, boy. I t- hey, Melinda, you're a citizen. A sway in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> See, Sway, you didn't want to believe me. I know Simone leave me, believe me, but it's kids in the bed. Most of my married friends, that's that's the biggest issue. Like, but these, twelve years old, twelve. They don't. They never want to. They always jumping in the bed with the parents. This little kid was. She was breastfeeding her twelve year old daughter. That's why Melinda went on a rant and said, nice "You're a breast. woman now. Get the hell away from me. Like, go find another titty. Go okay. suck on your yeah. own." I think Melinda needs a vacation. The whole, yeah. <laughs> the whole family. The whole family needs a vacation. You a woman now. <laughs> She's vacation. She can't get a new cell phone. She ain't gonna get no vacation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Two more quick stories. All right, kick. Cuddy. Oh my gosh. Okay, Kid Cuddy. I don't know, man. I think maybe our friend is going through some sort of turmoil in his life because we saw him on Twitter ranting publicly about Kanye and Drake not too long ago. And now it appears that the mother of his child has also been a target. According to a blog, Jasmine Brand, they broke some news saying that Kid Cuddy's baby mama, well, let me just go back to mother of his child. Let me give her that title, Jacqueline. She filed an order of protection against him. This wasn't the first time. Back in 2010, she sued him for child support. But going back to 2016, this order of protection was filed after Kid Cudi allegedly texted her in excess of 160 eight messages within a three day span back in August in which he threatened to call child services on her and that he was going to send the guy to stand by her house and that she was so gross and sick in the head and she wasn't shit and he was going to serve her of legal papers because he was seeking sole custody of their daughter Kid Cudi huh yeah, and apparently he was bothering her so much that she had to reschedule some exams. She's in school because of her emotional turmoil. Simone Boyce has joined us, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So, and she's been pretty much breaking down all these stories for us. And uh, 
Simone, this is your final task. What, uh, what happened to Kid Cudi? Like, you know what I mean? Like, who, who, what happens to any of them? You know? Yeah. I think uh, he's probably uh, fed well, up. obviously, yeah, he's fed up with something. There's some. He's such a talented guy. Yeah, yeah. He's so talented. Yeah. Talented musician, actor. Something's going on. Texter. Yeah. He's you know? great at texting. Might he's not great. be true. Yeah. We might not know. It might not be true. And yeah. even if it is, I don't feel like that chips away at his talent. No. no. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, people can still be going through something. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's just honest. If the, if it's just say it is true, he's just being honest where most of us won't be. Like Melissa or Melinda called. She was honest about her kids. <laughs> oh, I love them, but I don't, I don't like, like them. Um, and, uh, <laughs> before before we go, uh, Wednesday, um, the twenty eighth, um, is when Footsteps to Freedom is going to air next, correct? Mm, yes. And this is a doc that you did you produce, wrote the whole nine, right? Yeah. What is it about? So Footsteps of, to Freedom is about the little known history of the Underground Railroad and slavery in New York City. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are all these landmarks all around us that we walk past every single day and we don't realize it because this history is often forgotten and it's often overlooked. Um, so I, I picked up a book called Gateway to Freedom and on the first page there was a map that had all these historic sites and they were sites in Brooklyn and Manhattan. I said, oh my gosh, I had no idea that these were here mm-hmm. and I wonder if other people didn't know as well so I just decided to go to these sites and we filmed in actual underground railroad stations where wow. where slaves were hiding on their way to freedom and it was surreal um, so I just hope by sharing this history we get a little bit more perspective about what's going on today and it airs when right this Wednesday at 10 on Fox 5 and it'll be available online immediately following that okay where would where would they find it online so it'll be on youtube.com slash fox5ny. And then if you follow me on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, at Simone Boyce, I can let you know where to go as well. Let's hear a piece of it. The heroic stories of the Underground Railroad are steeped in conjecture and legend because there's very little record of what actually happened. We do know it wasn't an actual railroad beneath the Earth's surface. It was more like a network of safe houses and activists that facilitated the freedom of some 30,000 slaves and by some estimates, even 100,000. To learn more about what the Underground Railroad was really like, we can actually start right here in Brooklyn. Wow, mm. that's interesting, right? Jeez, what part of Brooklyn? So, Brooklyn Heights. Um, <laughs> Tracy, you live in a slave it was, <laughs> I knew, Yeah, it is Brooklyn Heights, yeah. Because yeah. they have a lot of different images on the streets, too, like a Montague Street. Yeah, but continue. So, bro- <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. In Brooklyn Heights, there's a church called Plymouth Church. Mm-hmm. And the pastor was a, a white abolitionist, but he worked alongside black abolitionists to ferry slaves to freedom. And they, they used to do that in the basement. At least that's where we believe uh, the slaves were kept. And there's very little documentation about what actually happened because mm-hmm. the stakes were so high. Right. Under the Fugitive Slave Act, a white abolitionist, you could be jailed or fined. For a black abolitionist, the price was much higher. You could actually be sold into slavery yourself. Mm. So that's why we we don't know as much as we would like to know about the activities of the Underground Railroad. Simone Boyce, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. You can hit her up directly. Once again, get out your social media. At Simone Boyce on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Okay. And uh, Tracy, thank you for that Celebrity Wire. Yeah, of course. And we got special guests joining us later in the show. Yeah, we have Lupita Nyong'o coming through. <laughs> okay. And then also... Um, I said that correctly. No. In our room, we're going to have Cool <laughs> Keith from Ultra Magnetic is going to join oh, us. wow. All right. Uh, right now is DJ... It's Sway in the Morning. Only from Shea 45. <laughs>
как на репите до вешни Друг лишним не буду и маде буду в аду Заведет вас, разгоняя победой беду Может быть день, день не будь и ночь Может быть мое появление заставит вас тоже Тут набрать опыта по пути перестать Так тормозить, ну и куда же ты идешь? А арта, он ри яркий, справа и слева Уже пришли к вам, чтобы поднять левел Левел ап, лев, 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 лев Level up, yo. Level, level up, level up, yo. Level, level up, level up, yo. Level, level up, level up,
former president George W. Bush. Yeah, that's great, man. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. I, didn't, I, I didn't guess he, he does like <laughs> black people a little right, bit, right? right. Like something that's about him. That's, that's, a, that's exactly. not the same thing. That's not the same thing? No, well, liking black people and... and, and being guilted at two. <laughs> yes, two we don't know, but here are the, some of the good things. There's Okay, so for the opening day, there were 3,000 artifacts that are available, but there's going to be 37,000 objects in total. Um, some of the highlights that are really interesting to me, the dress that Rosa Parks... Um, was sewing before she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat mm. on that segregated bus. That's over there for viewing. Um, Harriet Tubman's hymn book, a $600 bill of sale for a teenage girl named Polly, mm. the coffin of Emmett Till. It happened. Okay, so, okay, see, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> um, so you were watching TV this weekend? Yes. So what did you watch? Let's see. Um, well, I, I'm so excited that we have this museum. Okay. This um, national... Um, Museum of African American History and yep. Culture. It's It's been such a long time coming. Yeah. And when you think that we're in 2016 and we didn't have this museum mm -hmm. already, it's pretty crazy yeah. to think of all the achievements that went unnoticed in that way, but are now being being noticed and celebrated. It's it's huge. It's so powerful. I can't wait to go see it. I just yeah. want to go to D.C. right now and go see it. Hell yeah, man. We should go hand in hand. Because they've been Please. pushing for it since 1915. Yeah. yeah. And a lot wow. of people don't realize um, that the person who authorized this. This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Felt like I had some bars in me coming up. No, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I almost had it. I almost it caught decent. a flow. It was decent. Almost uh, it. Real excited about our guest today that's coming by Heather B. Lupita. You like you like Lupita. Yeah, I think she's very talented. Uh, she was at the um the over the weekend at, at the Smithsonian, the big the, the big talk of the town was everybody was going to the Smithsonian, right? And we, we got a special guest with us today who uh who is uh an outstanding correspondent. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember what was I. I mean, I think it was a Broadway special. I uh -huh. love covering the arts. Um, I moved to New York City about two and a half years ago for this position, and my favorite part about working in New York City is covering the rich arts and culture scene. So it was. I think it was the nomination for, was for Broadway. Well, congratulations, man. Well, you thank know. you. Yeah. Well, I ain't got no nomination. Yet, no. <laughs> you got a Broadway sway. You sleep a lot in the, at the place. He does. He sleeps a lot. Get your best sleep Damn. on Broadway. I got some of my best power naps watching Broadway. On Broadway? Yes, yeah. Simone, yes. You know, sometimes that happens. It's okay. It's okay, it, right? It does, it does happen, yeah. You fell asleep in a few? Oh. No, no, I, can, I can't fall asleep. Okay. I don't I don't fall asleep, but it, it does happen. I've seen Um, She goes by the name of Simone Boyce. She's with us right now. We Hello. actually did a sit-down interview and... She brought out the best of me, Heather B. That was nice. Yes. Yes. She brought out the best of me. Yeah. Thank you, Sway. That's such a huge compliment. Oh, thank you, Simone, for, <laughs> you know, that's such a hard task. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks for having me. Fox hey 5 cultural co correspondent, and you're also an Emmy-nominated TV reporter and producer, right? Yes. What does that mean to be Emmy nominated? Like you could go to the family functions now, and you got this prestige attached to your name. I mean, it's better to win. I'm, okay, I'm still, okay, I'm okay. still waiting for the win, but right now I'll take the nomination. Okay, you'll take the nomination. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. What's some of the work that they pointed out that that got you, that earned you that nomination? 